Hello good people of YouTube, Mountbatten here, and today I'm bringing you a round that it's not terribly impressive on my part, let's put it like that, you will find out what that means later, but it sure is absolutely freaking hilarious. So this is recorded when I was still getting used to the Wooster. This is actually about 10 games away from the game that I put up in my Taking Your Advice with the Wooster video. So I'm still relatively new to the Wooster in this video. This is after I respect the captain, however. So I do have the um, good captain build on here with the, I believe he's a 16 point captain. So I am running a decent captain on the Wooster now. And I, guys, this made me bust a gut when I was laughing. So when I, when I was laughing, of course, it, this made me bust a gut just so hard as to what happened with this end. Unfortunately, I wasn't rolling on audio at the time, and that may be a good thing because I was still on my old microphone, so it sounded like I was talking through a wet sock most of the time. But what happens is truly, truly worthy of being put into a video by itself. It's It's got, like, everything... Because this, this was recorded on the weekends. So it's got everything you can possibly want from a weekend match in it and it's the personification of World of Warships on the weekends and I succumb to the weekend potato-ness too as, as you will see so anyway the Wusta she is the tier 10 American light cruiser she is the personification of HE spam and I'm probably one of the biggest um, haters of HE spam and I went and got the Wusta because if you can't beat them why not join them um, that being said, after I have played the Wooster and I've actually gotten what I would consider decent at her, I must say there is more to the ship than just HE spam. You know, it's it's like with anything you try in World of Warships. People that complain about carriers I always tell them go play carrier. There's more to it than you know what you think's going on because I've gone up to tier six in the American carrier line. And it's it's so much micromanaging and just you have to keep an eye on everything and it's 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 a lot. <laughs> and is the Wooster as complicated as that? No, but it is more complicated than than um I thought. You have to watch your positioning, watch how your armor's angle, you know, will my shells make it that far? You know, where's he gonna be? Because the rainbow shells of the American cruisers, you know, they they're in the air for, you know, it's about the same time as a Trans-Pacific flight, so you got to keep a lot of things in mind. So anyway, me and this chappy are heading over to the sea cap when, oh look, some torpedoes out of absolutely nowhere. Nothing he could have done about that. I mean, they weren't spotted till they were right on top of him. So he eats a torpedo to his broadside, so takes away, looks like, ah, oh, about a third of his health and it's pretty rough for him. I know that definitely would have wrecked the Wusta. But um it, what's funny too is he's in chat saying nice torps. You know, he's complimenting that destroyer. And I don't know if he was spotted, so you know he if he was spotted there maybe he could have been trying to maneuver. But you saw he did turn, so he might have been trying to maneuver, thinking some were coming in from either the left or the right, but he just guessed wrong. So no real fault. He, he, he's not really at fault there, he's just bad luck. Which, a lot of World of Warships is honestly just good luck and bad luck. There's also skill, because you have to take advantage of those good luck situations and deal with those bad luck situations. But, honestly, not a lot you can do about that. Alright, so that the Moin is coming around fairly broadside, so I load up my AP, because I want to nuke him. And there he is, but he is just ever so slightly angled, turns, angles more, most of my shells bounce. So, fire another round of AP, and I see he's turning again, so I keep the AP loaded and slam on the brakes. But then I decide, nah, I might as well just go ahead and switch over to HE, and now he's actually at a pretty good angle for AP, but, you know gotta deal with the card you're given and the chappy beaches himself then shoves his torpedoes into the side of that Des Moines oh that chappy 
this guy is great. So now he's almost dead within the first, what, uh, three minutes of the game. But he has managed to take out a Des Moines after being dealt a pretty crappy card early on in the game. So kudos to him. And that was pretty much the only ship that went to sea besides that destroyer that was hanging out between C and B. So now I'm looking at the other side of the map. And oh, there goes that guy. So the Wooster. She's... I'd say she's fun, but it's it's also giving in for me, you know, giving in to that HC spam meta that's, I guess, Wargaming's trying to push on World Warships, because, you know, the American Light Cruiser line came out, um, before that the British Battleships came out, and now you also have the Harugumo and the Kitakaze, and it's kind of like, are you trying to go more towards the damage over time DPM style of game or gaming um especially with the recent changes to the AP that looks like they're testing now and may actually make it to the full game you know where the battleship AP shells only do 2% of the maximum damage to destroyers and I really not I'm not a big fan of that and I mean, this is really a topic for another video. You know, I get there has to be balance in the game with HG and stuff, but when I can do stuff like this, you know, just absolutely melt an FPG from this far away, way out of his effective range, eh, I do feel, it, it makes me feel guilty. That's what I'm trying to say. You know, anytime I play something like the Conqueror and just HG spam and do phenomenally well with just, you know, HG spamming, it makes me feel guilty, and I don't think I should really be feeling guilty when I'm doing well. So, there's that, but, I mean, some people will probably say I should feel guilty when I just delete a destroyer on Yamato. Not destroyer, delete the delete cruiser on Yamato. Well, yeah, but in order for you to delete a cruiser on Yamato, the cruiser has to be showing you your, their, their broadside, or they have to be so close and bow onto you that all your shells are going to enter into their bow and penetrate their citadel. So there has to be a goof up on the player's part. With HE, you can do everything right under HE fire and still be punished for it. There's an excellent video on uh, Flamu's channel of him and Conqueror just absolutely melting a Montana right out from the get-go. Montana does absolutely everything well, times his damage cons, times his repairs. You know, he even starts to retreat when he realizes he's in a bad situation and he still just melts him within the first five minutes of the game and to me that's a problem but that's a different video for a different day I kind of go from a tangent here back to this game all right so I am pushing into the B cap because the only cap the enemy has and it seems to be where most of our team is focused at there wasn't really too much else at sea. Well, there wasn't anything else at sea Oof, a little baby baby uh burp so I'm seeing this Shimada, he's opening up his broadside to me and just trying to get my angle on him and trying to get the shells to hit him. Because of course, you know, with the American cruiser shells and destroyer shells, you know, they all are rainbows. Rainbows of beautiful, beautiful HE. Or scary HE, depending if you're on the, if you're on the receiving end. I've been on the receiving end of many a Vista HE spam, so it's not a fun thing to witness. And here, what I was trying to do is I'm trying to see where my shells are landing in relation to the Yamato, but unfortunately that one just back to the side of the mountain. Oh, look, there's that destroyer that probably uh, got that lucky tarp off on the Chappie. And, uh, was that, a cruiser? Again, I watched this all back in Shotcut. Shotcut plays back at 480p, 30fps, so even though I have the full interface up, I can't really see the names. Uh, Des Moines, or Minotaur? I think it's the Minotaur. Alright, some more random torpedoes from... I'm guessing that destroying that smoke up there. They're pretty slow torpedoes, so they're probably Russian. Easily dodge those. So now I got a grosser curve first right there, and yeah, this is the Minotaur. And me, this curve first, and this, uh, was that... that in, no, that's not in Magan, it's North Carolina. We're all about to, you know... Take a chunk out of this Minotaur, easy target. You know, lightly armored British cruiser can only have use AP. 
uh, I show that iceberg who's boss. Curve first gives a little tap. Curve first, I'll show that iceberg who's boss. And now I'm just waiting to come around the side. Um, kind of full broadside onto the Minotaur. Yep, here we go. Time to engage the Daka. And yes, I'm sticking to AP. Uh, to sorry, HE because he is slightly angled. Oof, gets a chunk out of me. It looks like he's about to go down. Get the pressure up on him. And yep, he's done. Ooh, but not before. Yeah, nice chunk off on me. Or is that that? Uh, oh, and look, he got his torpedoes off. So now I'm trying to be like, oh well, crap. You know. It doesn't look too good for me, but I'm, I'm going to try to thread it. I really probably should have tried to go around the outside of it. Take one, take two, I'm done. I'm like, ah, oh, crap, I messed up. Well, I'm not the only one who messes up. And he gets the Amagi and the Kurt first in one torpedo salvo. So that Minotaur just knocked out a tier 10 cruiser, a tier 8 battleship, and a tier 10 battleship with one torpedo salvo. And chat absolutely explodes. Oh my god. I, I, that Amagi, and that Curve First went maximum potato. And, oh my god. And he's loving it, because he probably just got well over a uh, hundred and... Probably at least uh, the Curve First had like half health. Now was at around half, so... Oh yeah, he got well over a hundred thousand damage in one torpedo salvo. And three kills on top of that. And he just balanced the game back in his team's favor. He knocked out two tier 10s and a tier 8 and one torpedo salvo. And now, both teams are at um, five ships. Yes, both teams are at five ships now. So he just took it from a comfortable lead from my team to now it's a even fight again. And my god, he is... I actually talked to this guy after he joined... He actually joined the Discord server after... Um, and his video, this was supposed to come out, uh, yesterday, but the Jean Bart review, well, Jean Bart got surprisingly announced out of nowhere, uh, yesterday in release, so Jean Bart took its Thursday slot, so now this is what Friday's video is, because I've been, you know, I told him I was going to upload the clip to the channel, because, my god, he just got, that's the dream salvo, that's what, I'm pretty sure that's what most cruisers dream of, most destroyers dream of that, most Japanese destroyers dream of that salvo, and he got off with a single torpedo salvo from Minotaur. So, now that, well, I'm actually talking to him in chat right here, um, the game is still going in our, in my team's favor, but a lot of our ships are at pretty low health, and don't get me wrong, some are still pretty comfortably uh, alive but I did say this is a weekend game so what are weekend teams really really good at I'll give you a second to think over that it rhymes with moosing and you only get one guess if you guess losing you're correct. So let's look at the situation here. My team has three battleships alive and one destroyer. Their team has two destroyers alive and one battleship. So, oh, and one of the one of the destroyers in Asashio, so he can't even hurt our destroyer. And one destroyer is uh, was that a black? Boy, I wish I would stop checking because at this point I was checking Discord on my phone. Not really painting. Yeah, here we go. I'm back. Was that a black and yeah? Well, it, it's dead. That that's what it is. It's dead now. So it leaves us with um, one destroyer against an Asashio and uh, which battleship is that? I can't read because shotcut is in such low quality. So now we have, uh, was that an FDG or an Alsace turn right into, yep. <sighs> he turned into those twerps, by the way. Thankfully, I believe that's our other curve first. He didn't slow down into the twerps. So now it's three to two. Okay. Yeah, we still have a gross curve first. Really strong battleship. Should be able to handle this no problem. He's got most of his health. 
So this really shouldn't be a problem for him. Right? Right, guys? Man, that other battleship is just burning up. Is that analysis? I wish uh, in game me would actually look at the other battleship so I can read its name. Alright, so yeah, this volley of torpedoes going off at that battleship. What is that thing? Oh, it's a Yamato. My bad. Yamato. Easy deletion for a Kerforce, right? Well, it would be if the Kerforce could get there and the Yamato would stop getting torpedoed. Oh, it doesn't have to kill him now, it just has to drive by him. Kerforce, what are you doing? Kerforce, what are you doing? An over half health Kerr first went in for the ram, tried to bail out bail out at the last second on a Yamato with like what he had like what two thousand health. That Yamato just got the trade deal of the century. Trump would be proud of him. And there goes my comment section. Okay, so now we have <laughs> our lone destroyer and our Montana against. Asashio. Now, the Asashio can't hurt our destroyer because it has deep water torpedoes, but it can nuke the crap out of the Montana. And plus, they have all the caps. And the Asashio is a very stealthy destroyer, so you can easily outrun the Montana and just keep capping and keep torpedoing the Montana too, because that's exactly what he's doing if you look in the background right there. Thankfully, our Montana has his sound system installed, so he has those sweet, sweet torpedo beats. And I know I'm not doing the best of trying to track the game and latch onto a ship or anything, because I was talking in Discord to the guy that, you know, got the triple torp salvo off. He's he's actually, a, I believe his Discord name is uh, Thirstman, if you see him in the Discord server, that's him. Alright, so here I am back. Okay, so what needs to happen here? We need our destroyer to go and cap B and our Monty to go hide. Because our destroyer can easily smite the Asashio if he runs into him. The Asashio has, has terrible guns. And our destroyer, what is that, a Gade? Not a Gade, that's a tier 10 game. Um. Again, this is the struggle of watching things back in Shotcut. You can't read crap on the HUD. I mean, pretty much any destroyer with decent guns can smite an Asashio back to whatever hell it crawled out of. So the destroyer does actually decide to head in the direction of B. If you look at the game at the numbers, it's it's really close. And the Monty and the Destroyer are sticking together. That's a good call. Destroyer can spot for Monty. Monty is Monty and can sneeze on the Asashio and delete it. And at this point, it's a game of numbers. The Asashio can either hide, go for the Yay Cap, or run. And if I was him, I would probably just stealth my way around to A and just keep playing um, hide and seek. Oh, yep, there we go. Thankfully the uh, Monty was already turning into the, the direction that the, 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 the torpedoes were coming from. But that's why destroyers need to go be with battleships and be screaming for the battleships because of that right there. Those surprise torps from nowhere. Alright, so the destroyer touches the B cap, which the enemy team said, you know, if they touch our cap, it's done. So I can't help typing in chat, just touch. Along with, I believe, the destroyer. But then for some reason, he decides to leave the cap. I, I'm not sure why, because he, we do need more than a bit of a touch to win. And, yeah, this is a bit infuriating in game because we were like, dude, just stay on the cap. You were capping it. He's not there. And for a moment, I thought he was going to throw the game, but then the Monty comes in and sells straight into the cap because he's a badass. He's not afraid of no Asashio. But the destroyer also does go into the cap. 
And that's the sweet, sweet sound of the clock running out and us winning the match. This was in a celebratory victory toot from the destroyer. This was a hilarious match, a nerve-wracking match. And Kagero. It's a Kagero. Okay. So it's another um, torpedo-y destroyer, but still should have better guns than the Asashio. And as you see, I am rightfully second from the bottom on my team because I went full potato this game. And this goes to show you guys, we all have potato games. None of us are special. Uh, well, I mean, you guys are special, but none of us are exempt from the potato rule. And the potato rule is that you will go potato. It, it happens, trust me. It happens a lot. So yeah, um... That amazing torpedo salvo from the Minotaur that wrecked three people on my team, including me. Hats off to you, my dude. This is the clip that I showed you. I would up oh, showed you. This is the clip that I told you I would upload to the channel, and here it is. Get your um your dues. <laughs> but yeah, that's just God, man. I I can't remember the last time three ships got taken out in one torpedo salvo. Salvo um, in a game that I was in. I mean, I remember a double strike from a Shimakaze that took out Nina Yamato and an Iowa. But I can't remember the last time that it was three besides this time. So, yeah, kudos to you, dude. So, if you like the video, drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe. We're on our way to a thousand subscribers. Once you get to a thousand, you're gonna, you guys are going to get a face reveal and you're going to get more pictures of, of my dog, Dakota. I mean, she's a puppy. She's very cute. I must say, she is very, she's very much worth just clicking that subscribe button. If you want to support the channel, you can donate to my PayPal. I have that down in the description down below, and you can also join us on the Discord. That's also in the description down below. We'd love to have you in there. You can talk to me. You can talk to the, <laughs> the guy that pulled off this amazing um, triple torpedo salvo, and we'd love to have you. So again, thank you guys for watching. I'll be catch all of you guys in the next one. Thank you.